G'day there guys, life is like a box of chocolates and you're as sweet as they come. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie and get ready for a good time. Cause it's gonna be better than a box of chocolates. Thank you. Posted by user Moveta321654. Titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to move? So my, female 42, husband, male 44, and I have been married for 21 years. We have two adult children, male 22 and 24. One is in college out of state and the other is in the Navy. When we first got married, my husband was in the Navy and we spent the first 10 years of our marriage moving from place to place wherever his new duty station was. I found it hard to make friends and I could not keep a job so I made a difficult decision and decided to be a stay-at-home mom. When he got out of the Navy 11 years ago, he took a job and we moved. Three years in, he got offered a job in another part of the company, however, it was in another state, so we moved again. We stayed there for six years and I went back to college and got my degree and began looking for work. I found a job that I liked in my field, and six months into working, he said he was offered a job with a new company and wanted to take it, but that would mean we would be moving almost 2,000 miles from where we were in a new state. I reluctantly agreed because the new state would have more job opportunities for me, and we would be closer to our family, which is something that we had not had in many years. Last night, my husband came up to me and said that there was a job opening in his company and he wanted to apply for it. It would mean a pay raise and better hours, but the caveat would be that we have to move again. We've been living in our new state for three years. I love it here. I have an amazing job and I am making great money. I finally have friends and am able to socialize. I told him that I am not moving again. Anytime we have to move, he always leaves first and I end up being responsible for selling and packing the house and I am not doing that again. Our son's college is only two hours from here. We can see him twice a month. If we move, that means we would have at least a day's drive and would only be able to do that once or twice a year. Now my husband is upset with me and guilt tripping me because he claims I do not support him. I told him that was BS because I spent most of my life moving from place to place to support his career. He told me that I am selfish and he is just trying to provide for us. I told him that we are more than comfortable where we are now and that if he truly wants to take the job, he will be going alone. Am I the a-hole for refusing to move again? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I think I'm the a-hole because my reluctance to move could cause my husband to miss out on a career opportunity. Your husband seems to value his work above your own work and seems convinced that you moving away from your amazing job that you have right now and him moving up in his job is a net positive thing for the family. Like you've obviously set a precedent before now where you were happy to move and deal with the ins and outs of moving under the assumption that things will be better for your family financially as a result. Your sacrifices then were worth it. But in my humble opinion, now what he's asking you to do is not worth it to you anymore. Sure, it's better for him all round, but he's refusing to consider the impact it'll have on the marriage and your own personal and emotional health to be taken from somewhere you've finally settled in well. The situation may have to be that he moves alone and deals with it. At this point in time, your son is in college. I don't honestly see the benefit or good change that this new pay rise will have, besides the job freeing him up to work better hours that are healthier for him. Ultimately, I'm not in this relationship and I'm only getting OP's side of the story, so I have to go with not the a-hole based on what I'm reading. I disagree with the husband on this one. Now in the comments, Shaq1071 says, Not the a-hole. You already gave yourself the answer. You supported his career for 21 years. You gave up everything for him. Your social life, your family, you even postponed your education. And now that everything is settled, you're doing financially fine too. 
He accuses you of not supporting him? He should start supporting you for a bit. You did your part, and now it's your time to shine. Perfect reply. He obviously has no idea what you have given up and gone through in supporting him, or he just doesn't care. You're both relatively young, so if he does decide to move, it'll be your decision whether to follow him or not, but giving up the life you finally have for yourself could cause resentment on your part. Not the a-hole, but I think you may be married to one. This so much. My husband's in a job that may require him to move around, and before we decide on a move, he would insist on factoring in my comfort, proximity to good medical care. I have an autoimmune condition. Availability of great schools now that we have a daughter, etc. All that may not have a set monetary value, but they are definitely worth something, or we won't see people spending money to join planned communities. This is what happens when one person is always given priority. The first time they're told no, they lash out and call the other person selfish and unsupportive. Not the a-hole OP. Let your husband move if he wants. You finally have a good life, and he can expect you to give it all up, but you don't have to. Reminds me of a quote. Equality looks like oppression to the privileged. Yep, he's confusing you don't support me with you don't support me at your expense indefinitely. This. Indefinite support without hesitation or question is not a partnership. It's like a bizarre hostage situation. Saving this comment because I really needed to see it. Just started the process of separation from my STBX and couldn't put my thumb exactly on why I felt so imprisoned. You hit the nail on the head. And for those that weren't aware, STBX is soon to be X. Pooch on Mum says, Not the a-hole. Your husband should be discussing each move with you, and it should be a combined decision, especially now that you have a job. His job and offer does not automatically have preference over yours. Did he ever discuss a move with you after he left the Navy? Or was it always, we are doing this? I was still on the fence given the history with the Navy. Totally understandable needing to move and being used to it. But the fact that he expected you to sell and pack the house every time is what made up my mind on the judgment. For the post-Navy jobs... I can't believe the companies didn't give him time to settle his affairs and then move. It seems like he took it for granted that you would sell and pack the house every time. That too with little kids when they were younger. I could never imagine being in that situation alone. Stand up for yourself now. It is not too late. Have a conversation about the pros and cons, about long-term plans. It is okay if you end up deciding to move. Just make sure that you have a say in it. And OP includes a post update. I hope this is allowed. I apologize for not being able to respond to everyone, and thank you all for your kindness and replies. To answer some questions, 1. My husband and I have been together since I was 15, and he was 17. He joined the Navy right after graduation from high school when he was 18, and I was 16 but had to wait two years before we could marry. Two, he works for a company that is plants in 15 states. He's currently in middle management, but if he wants to advance his career further, he would need to go to another plant out of state. Three, financially we are more than comfortable. We do not need any more money. Four, my son plans to stay in the place that he is after college. We have a great relationship with him, and he comes home one time a month, and we see him one time a month. My other son comes home on leave whenever he can, and stays with us. We are very close to both of the boys. 5. I talked to my husband again tonight, and told him quite firmly that moving again was not an option for me. The area he wants to move has very little jobs in my field, and specialty in that area and I would need to commute more than an hour one way from a job versus the 20 minutes that I have here. We are sandwiched between two major cities, and if we move, we would be an hour from the most major city. I would also have to take a massive pay cut and work a menial job to build a new network to find employment in my field. And six, my husband is disappointed in me for not wanting to leave. He left to stay with a friend because he needs to think. 
he doesn't understand why I would force him to turn down an opportunity to advance his career further. I told him to take all the time he needs, but I am not moving again. I said I would revisit the possibility when I'm ready for retirement in 15 years, but no sooner. Posted by user SammySamXXX Titled Am I the a-hole for using the money I saved to get my stepson a prosthetic leg instead of contributing towards my brother's wedding? So I, male 33, have a younger brother, male 25, who's the family's golden child. Once he was born, he had three parents, mum, dad, and me. I was required to drop everything any time to look after him. I shared 65% of his care in the first few years of his life, and then as he grew older, my parents expected me to provide for him financially. When he fell sick, I ended up paying for his medical expenses, driving him places, going to the doctor's follow-ups with him. I did all of that while all my other social relationships fell apart. No more friends calling me, nor seeing me. I had trouble committing to a serious relationship because I didn't give it my all. Once I met my fiancé, I kept my distance and focused on her and my stepson. My mum would call me to ask why I'm no longer doing X things for my brother. They made comments that my fiancé stole me to get me to raise her son. He's 13. He uses crutches because his left leg is amputated. We do everything together. I love him so much and I can't wait to adopt him and my fiancé is happy with it. I only visit family on big occasions since my aunt is kind and treats my fiancé well. My brother is getting married in March and I heard the family was putting money together to pay for the wedding. My dad called me to ask to contribute with $15,000 which was a lot. I have other responsibilities, like I'm a dad now and I need to focus on my son's needs. After talking, I agreed to pay 10000 Then my aunt called to let me know that no one else paid a dime and it was just me who contributed, and it was a lie from my parents to get me back on track because my brother is and should always be my priority. I went to talk to them. Then I blew up after my mum started talking about how my fiancé was clearly using me to provide for her son. I argued with her. I told her I won't be contributing anything towards the wedding and will use the money to get my stepson a prosthetic leg, since he is my priority now. My fiancé couldn't believe when I told her. They were shocked and my uncle berated me for doing this and called me nuts, because my fiancé isn't even married to me yet, so she and her son weren't yet family. I argued with them and then I left. I noticed more relatives started berating me, saying I ruined it for my brother. He'll resent me, and I was being selfish and stupid to do that. They asked me to take my rose-coloured glasses off, and realise that my family remains, but relationships like that, meaning my fiancé, that are based on greed, don't last, and I will admit that they were right. I don't regret what I've done for my brother. He needed me, and I've always been supportive of him, but this wedding isn't really for him, but for my parents' image, and trying to show it off to everyone. I'm sure my brother prefers a simple celebration, but they control everything. No, it's not a cultural thing, but more about looking good to outsiders. I know I wasn't clear about why my family thinks my fiancé was with me because of money, but it's because of my appearance. I have a burn scar that covers the side of my face and goes down my neck because of a car accident I had three years ago. It doesn't bother me. I feel confident enough to socialise and it's never been an issue. But my family keeps bringing it up like they're shocked my fiancé isn't bothered by that. I wanted to mention this but I hesitated because I wasn't sure what people are going to think. I'm sorry. It's quite clear your parents are manipulative and toxic wastes of people, not worth your time to be around. But for some reason you've maintained contact at 33 years old. I can respect your resilience for doing so, and I'm sure there's a reason for it that I'm not seeing here since you can only say so much in one post. 
If they've gotten the family to gang up on you when they knowingly aren't putting any money towards this wedding, then there's a big problem here. I'm beginning to suspect uh, you make a lot of money, so they're putting that financial expectation on you. That makes them terrible people. And of course, if your brother's 25 years old and resents you for not being the sole financial provider of his wedding, then he has bigger problems in his life, oh my god. They all know your situation with your family and their past abuse towards you and continue to disregard all of that and just say, you know what, you're making big problems now, let's forget all our past with you. I say let this continue to be their problem and cut them all out of your life. They're dead weight and you don't need them. Not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Tinkerific says, Not the a-hole. They wanted you to pay for your brother's wedding? Oh, hell no. There's nowhere on planet Earth where that's required. Your brother pays, his fiancé pays, and they should work with your parents and future father-in-law and mother-in-law to see what they can contribute. No one else in the family should be expected to help, let alone be the sole source of funding. I honestly think you should go no contact with your family. These people are just going to keep using you. I couldn't believe they called OP's relationship with fiancé one based on greed. Their kid is not a bank. <laughs> They're projecting. Not the a-hole. They are using you, manipulating you, and ruining your shot of having a happy life. You should go no contact. I almost never recommend going no contact with family, but yours is very toxic, and preventing you from having normal relationships and building your own life. Your stepson and your fiancé are your priority, and frankly, paying for a wedding and a prosthetic leg so the boy can have an ordinary life doesn't compare. And OP replies, Yes, it's difficult trying to constantly fight with family, but I'm tired and I can't take any more of this. They're probably in my brother's ear right now, telling him that I don't care about him anymore and such, but... My stepson deserves a normal life like any other kid. Life is passing by, and I really want him to be able to do all the things that he couldn't do before once he gets a prosthetic leg. He's excited about it, and keeps asking a lot of questions which is heartwarming, and it saddens me that he never got the opportunity to get it sooner. Cut contact with your parents and only talk to your brother directly. If you still want a relationship with him, and your aunt, who was the MVP of your family, for having the guts to tell you that you were being manipulated. Not the a-hole. A kid's medical needs are more important than a party. And OP replies, Absolutely. It's very clear that my parents are the ones who want an expensive party and are being unreasonable with the wedding cost. They lied to me about the whole family paying, but that wasn't true. Posted by user Empty Pomegranate, titled Am I the a-hole for telling my co-workers why I quit? I, 21 female, started working at a coffee shop about two months ago. I loved it when I first started. It was hard work, but enjoyable, and I made good tips. I liked my co-workers and the owners as well. For context, the owners are a young couple. The owner I'm referencing in this is the wife. Let's call her V. Yesterday, when I was working my shift, I saw some things that make me wildly uncomfortable. To start, the manager that works there, I'll be calling her M, does all the duties of a manager, but is not technically one. I found out that she's being paid $9 an hour, which is less than half of what Starbucks managers make. This is a family-owned shop in a wealthy part of town. It's criminal how much they pay her. It's also important to note that the shop is severely understaffed. Before I quit, there were three employees, plus the owners, who both have jobs. I was expected to work and close alone. I got off training less than a month ago on Friday and Saturday nights, which are the busiest nights of the week. It's also a bakery, so it still gets business at night. At this point, I think they're understaffing to make a profit. Anyways... Aside from the pay thing, yesterday while I was on shift, I witnessed V yelling at M about completely mundane things. 
It's extremely inappropriate and degrading. The way she talked to M made it seem like she was a child, not the grown woman who keeps this door from falling apart. It made me so uncomfortable to see the owners treating the most valuable worker they have with such little respect and regard for decency. I have a no tolerance policy for things like this in my workplace. Additionally, the owners tried to implement an illegal practice that requires employees to pay draw shortages. It's illegal in my state to do so unless written consent is given and only if the deduction doesn't make the worker go below minimum wage. This wasn't an issue until my draw came up seven bucks short on Friday night. They tried to make me pay it even though everyone else also worked that day. I just had the responsibility of counting the draw. They ended up dropping the whole thing after I told them I would call the workforce commission in my state and report them for illegally deducting my wages. I know it's only seven bucks, but it isn't about the money. It's about the legality and the lack of respect in all regards. Anyways, I quit this morning. I decided it would be appropriate to tell my friend who recently got hired but hadn't started yet what happened, as well as the high school age girl I worked with there. I thought it would be important for them to know about the treatment going on. I'm afraid am I the a-hole, because I think what I did was right, but it also might not have been my place to contact my co-workers and tell them what happened. If they quit, the place will go under, which I don't feel that bad about because it's the owner's fault that they treat staff badly, but I still do feel a little guilty. Am I the a-hole for potentially causing a shop to close down and for contacting my co-workers? If it's at risk of shutting down over having to pay the minimum wage to people, then it shouldn't be allowed to operate in the first place. That's scummy work practices and they shouldn't be taking advantage of people like that. I would absolutely do the same if I was in your position. You're only an a-hole to these people because they don't get the advantage of people being ignorant to the reality of the situation when you say things like this to the rest of the co-workers. What you did was not an a-hole move, but actually quite the opposite. You did a good job, not the a-hole. Now in the comments, Pile Driver says, That which can be destroyed by the truth should be. A quote from PC Hodgel. Not the a-hole. If the owners of the coffee shop are treating their employees in an unsustainable way, they are the ones who will deal with the fallout. That being said, I highly doubt that you speaking frankly about your experiences working there will lead to the shop's closure. Best case scenario, they have to start treating their workers better. More likely scenario, they continue to be the a-hole with a high turnover rate that they blame on incompetent help. I wonder if the wife is stealing money from the register and trying to make the employees pay for it. Seven dollars here, seven dollars there, etc. Before long, the employees will be paying them to work there. I got fired from a certain dirty diner chain for stealing from the register. It kept coming up 30 bucks short. Every time I worked with a particular manager, I was an easy and obvious target because I was addicted at the time. I never stole from them though. Not once. I was too paranoid. Also, I was raised better than that. I'm not a thief. I'm many things, but thief is not one of them. They never brought me up on charges. They just stopped putting me on schedule. Two months later, the manager that I was working with every time money came up missing was fired for stealing. Hmm. Interesting. Not the a-hole. Younger staff, especially if it's a first job, may not know their rights or know that they're being berated for small mistakes is not accepted in the workplace. You did good to warn them. If the business fails, that's the fault of the owner's poor management skills. Business owners talk about the free market and all, but never want to take the blame for them not succeeding in the market because they're incompetent. Nor do they want to deal with laborers deciding to sell their work elsewhere when they choose. Not the a-hole. If they don't want everyone to quit, the owners should 1. Not deduct wages, 2. Pay people properly, and 3. Not understaff as severely. Like, it's not your fault that the owners suck. What goes around comes around. So OP adds in an update in this post and says, Thank you for all the kind words. 
After I quit, I felt more confident about the situation, as she tried to start gaslighting me about not understanding reality. She also said several times it was sad that I was quitting over a cash shortage. I made sure to correct her and tell her that it was her abusive behavior that made me quit. Update, a lot of comments are suggesting that I make the report anyways. I really want to do this. The only issue is they will obviously know that it was me, and I'm afraid of retaliation of some kind. They know where I live because they had to come pick up the key to the store. The owner locked themselves out from my apartment at one point, which weirded me out, but that's another issue. I know it's unlikely that anything would happen, but I'm nervous nonetheless and not sure exactly what would be best. I made sure to text the current workers the laws and explain to them why it is illegal, so I'm hoping they will be able to stand their grounds. And final update, I've decided to go ahead and file the complaint, partly for the illegal wage deductions, but mainly because of the underpayment of the manager. I realized it's abnormal to have a shop and two owners with full-time jobs, but no real manager. Then I realized what they were doing, taking away one or two tasks that would classify her as a manager so they could continue to underpay her. It's abhorrent, and I hope the investigation reveals underpayment and she's able to collect what belongs to her. Posted by user Caffeine Hunter, titled, Am I the a-hole for making my boyfriend hold our baby without question? So we, 24 female, 32 male, were in the kitchen. He was leaning up against the counter and chatting. I was holding the baby. I held her out for him to take her so I could pull up my pants, but I didn't mention it. He didn't take her right away and said, Why? He does this quite often. Usually we can joke it off, but I'm getting sick of trying to jostle with him to hold her. So this time it just made me angry. It's his damn daughter too. I snapped and yelled, just take her, which he did. Once I had pulled up my leggings, he said I could have just said that I needed to adjust, but my argument was I shouldn't need to give him a reason to hold his baby daughter. I took her back immediately once I was done, and he said that he doesn't want to be around me as I make him feel like crap. He's now been sulking in his man cave for an hour. Am I the a-hole? Edit, he's now been down there for almost three hours. Edit 2. Thank you everyone for your responses. I wasn't expecting this to get so much traction. It appears we definitely need to work on our communication and discussing our responsibilities regardless of who is at fault. Thank you again for all your responses and advice. I definitely agree that you need to work on your communication in these sorts of situations here and figure out why what you're saying is making him feel like crap. Potentially, if you were to give this one more context and examples of conversations, it may turn into an everyone sucks here judgement for me, because words can and do hurt. It does seem like this is an overreaction of sorts caused by a straw that broke the camel's back here, where he's held his tongue until now. And that's okay. Arguments and fights are okay and healthy, and they lead to positive outcomes a lot of the time. The fact that you don't attack him for this and you allow him the time to be alone and sort out his emotions is very commendable too. I like how you're approaching this situation, OP. I'm going to have to go with not the a-hole for this one, as it seems like it's just your average argument and you shouldn't be expected to clarify your reason for handing your child over every single time. Now in the comments, not the a-hole. Like you said, you shouldn't need to give him a reason to hold his daughter. What if you were holding her out to him because your blood sugar was low and you were dizzy and about to fall down? Would he have been like, well, it's your fault for not telling me the reason you need me to hold my daughter, if she got hurt in the fall? And OP replies, you know, that's an excellent point I hadn't even considered. There's a video online where this legit happened to a woman at a gas station or convenience store or something. She got kind of weird and glazed over. The clerk took the baby, the woman promptly had a seizure. It's sudden and dangerous, and there's no time for a question as stupid as why. That's so scary, oh my god. Something similar happened to me. Baby was just over a year, 
I was having a health issue, and we were in a hotel. I was holding my baby and suddenly became faint all over. The staff immediately took the child, got me a seat, and found my husband and older child in the play area. I was barely coherent. All sorted a week later, just had to wait for the procedure. The issue was getting progressively worse. It's surprisingly common, and there are all sorts of different reasons as to why it happens. My mum tells a story of when I was a year old and she was pregnant with my brother. She was in the waiting room of the doctor's office and got a strange feeling and said out loud, please take care of my baby, and passed out on the floor. Scary stuff indeed. Not the a-hole at all. It shouldn't be unusual for a dad to take a baby. Are you okay? I feel like for you to get to the point of posting here, you might not be. And OP replies, I feel guilty about making him upset, but at the same time, justified in the view that he shouldn't need a reason to hold our baby, so wanted outside opinions. Thank you for asking though. I agree with you. If you ask and you have a genuine reason too like you did, he should sense that he needs to grab the little one. That being said, is it worth having more of a chat to him to explain how you feel? He doesn't sound like a bad guy given that you can joke about certain stuff and sometimes a more direct message solves all of these things. Good luck, Mama. DM if you need to talk. Alright guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you need a good laugh, please do check out my second channel, Marky2, links down in the description below, or it's going to appear somewhere on the screen here at the end, little bubble with my face on it. As always, a big shout out to my Patreon and channel members, your faces are surrounding me right now and I love to have you guys with me, and down in the comment sections of each and every video, and just knowing that you're always there to support me, it's a humbling and lovely feeling. And rest assured, I do see you, and I do notice your support, and I thank you every day for being here and helping me along this journey. Not much else to say besides that, guys. Um, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I do hope that you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to, I will see you in the next video, and thank you again. Bye.